Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all those who are watching today. And welcome to today's IELTS Answer Analysis class, where I will be looking at an IELTS task that you have been working on in the Facebook Kinetic Swoosh English group. And I will be providing responses to that task. So if you are watching this class live, please let me know in the chat box. And let me know where you are at the moment. And also, if you have the answers to the task, as we start to move through those, let me know as well, and I will read those out during the class. So uh, for those who haven't watched um, a class recently, my name is Alex, and um, I have a lot of experience working with the IELTS exam, so I will be demonstrating how the task relates to the exam and how it can benefit you in your studies going forward. So hello to Kodar. Many thanks for introducing yourself in the chat today. And I look forward to others um, doing the same. So let's have a look then at the task for today. It's related to useful phrases for IELTS writing. So writing task two, requires you to write an opinion essay, as we established uh, in yesterday's class. And you are expected to use natural and appropriate language within this essay. So what do we mean by natural and appropriate language? Well, first of all, we mean using formal language. And of course, we had a look at examples of this yesterday. So for example, using children, not kids. Um, of course, you're expected to use correct spelling. So notice the spelling here of the word government uh, with the silent N. Um, and we should obviously spell this correctly uh, and not incorrectly. Um, also, you should write words in the correct order. So it would be modern society, for example, not society modern. Uh, another feature of using natural and appropriate language is that you would use the appropriate combinations of words. So here we have uh, some phrases. Pay attention is the correct phrase, not put attention. And we would use the phrase intense negotiations, not strong negotiations. So these are the sorts of word combinations which you would want to use in the IELTS exam. You can see we've got Neon here today. Hello to you. Thank you very much for wishing me a good day. I hope you're having a good day as well. So let's focus on this then, the appropriate combinations of words. When we talk about appropriate combinations of words, we are also talking about collocations. So collocations can involve different word classes. In the example, pay attention, we were looking at a combination of a verb and a noun, obviously to pay being the verb and attention being the noun. In the phrase intense negotiations, you have an adjective plus a noun. Um, there are other types of combinations of words as well. Um, in the expression almost certainly, we have a combination of an adverb plus an adverb. So anyone in the class aware of any other combinations of words, which are common collocations. If you are, then let me know in the chat. And I can see in the chat that uh, Zab is there as well. Hello to you, Zab. I hope you are doing well. Okay. So, it's very important that you are able to use collocations effectively in order to improve your IELTS writing score. Other collocations which um, will help in terms of uh, using uh, combinations of words correctly, what can we think of? Another one which is quite common is the expression a heavy smoker. So that might be one that we use. Um, you wouldn't say a big smoker. If someone smokes a lot, they are a heavy smoker. So there's a combination of an adjective and a noun. So there, there are quite a few 
of these in English. Hello, Alice. Great to see you in the class. Okay, I've got a, a question here from Kodar. Um, is it necessary to write a conclusion in each body? So a conclusion should be written at the end of IELTS writing task two, not in each uh, paragraph. So only um, in the final paragraph at the end of the essay. Okay, so let's have a look at the task itself then. So here we're focusing specifically on adjective noun collocations. And these are some which are very useful, which um, you could use in your essay, obviously depending on the topic. So do we have any answers? The first one, a civilization that is current and contemporary. Can anyone give me an appropriate adjective we can use with the noun civilization, which would fit this description? Let me know in the chat box if you can. Okay, so uh, civilization that is current and contemporary, an adjective which would be appropriate to describe this would be modern. So we could use the word modern. So here, a modern civilization. as the adjective that we could use. Um, so looking at number two, societies that live off the land, an adjective that would fit this description. Let me know what you think. Okay, just having a look here in the chat box, I can see Jay um, suggested modern for the previous uh, phrase. So that was correct. And as did Ninzi as well, also said modern. Uh, so that's great to see. What about number two? Okay, so Ninzi is suggesting agricultural. And absolutely, that would be correct. So if we can fit that one in there. Agricultural societies live off the land. They're farming societies. And so that would be the correct answer for number two. Oh, slightly misspelled that one. So it should be agricultural. Yeah, okay, so that would be number two then. Um, number three, a culture that is stronger than other cultures. What would be the adjective for this phrase? Let me know your suggestions. Okay, so I think the best option here is dominant. A dominant culture is a culture that is stronger than others. So, there you go. That's what we should have here. Yeah, dominant culture. Um, number four, communities that are doing well and are successful. Can you see an adjective in the box that fits that description? Great to see, by the way, um, Zab, uh, Jell, Ninzi, Jayshree, Jay and Koda all uh, suggesting uh, dominant for number three. And Kodar is going for urban. Well, urban doesn't necessarily mean successful. Okay, Ninzi, Jayshri, yeah, thriving. Absolutely, yeah. So that's the adjective that fits the description there. That's a thriving community. It's a community that is doing well and is successful. Just like you're thriving in giving the correct answers to these questions. Okay. 
Okay, so these are the four collocations we've got so far. Modern civilization, agricultural societies, dominant culture, thriving communities. Uh, okay, what's the next one? So the public that is made up of ordinary people. What's the expression we use here? Okay, Jay Sri says general. As does Surya, general, good. Yeah, absolutely. That's the expression we use, isn't it? We talk about the general public. And number six, populations that live in towns and cities. Any suggestions for this one? Okay, good, sorry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're talking about urban, aren't we? Jay Shri as well, and Ninzi, good. And Chris and Zab, you're all in agreement. You're all correct. This is urban, urban populations. Okay, so just two options left. The elite that controls and runs a country. What do we think to this one? Surya, Jayshree. Good, yep. Yeah. So the governing elite. A very useful collocation there. Okay. And so number eight, there's only one option left, must be indigenous. So a people that live together in a particular region, it would be, we get rid of uh in this case, we don't use uh because people is plural, but indigenous would be the answer here. Okay, so those are our collocations. The adjective and noun collocations here. Try to use these in your IELTS writing practice because if you are able to use a variety of collocations in your writing, then you will score more highly in the vocabulary uh, criterion and that's 25% of your writing grade. So improving your vocabulary is obviously crucial when it comes to improving your writing in general. So those are the, the collocations uh, that we have focused on for today. Again, I would encourage you as well to build your, vo your collocation store when you are writing down new vocabulary. Uh, don't just write single words, but write phrases. What are the, if you're writing down, for example, the noun civilization, what are some common adjectives you could use with the word civilization? So modern is the one we've looked at today. The opposite to modern would be ancient. That would work as well. Um, if we're looking at, for example, a culture, we've got the word culture. What are some common adjectives we could use with culture? Obviously, we have dominant. Uh, monoculture would be another one. Uh, that we could use as well. Uh, so this is this is uh, the key here: is building from just individual words towards using appropriate phrases in our writing. Okay. So thank you very much for those um, who have watched the class today. Thank you for all your contributions. I hope you did well in the task, and I hope to see you next week as well, where we will look at more answers to the IELTS tasks that we'll be focusing on in the Kinetics and Swoosh Facebook groups. So look out for those, and I'll see you again in next Tuesday's class. Until then, take care.